However, like the Rockets, Montreal have produced some outstanding young Canadian talent, like 20-year-old Grant Needham, who had four goals in 1988 and already has the club scoring lead in 1989. Foster's Lager, the Golden Throat Charmer, proudly presents CSL Sunday on TSN. Today from Claude Robillard Center in Montreal, it's the North York Rockets against the Montreal Supra. Both these teams coming off great performances in their last outings. One week ago, Montreal beat Winnipeg 3-0, while the Rockets drew scoreless against Toronto in a game that they could have won if not for the brilliant goalkeeping of the Blizzards, Pat Harrington. So heading into this CSL Sunday, here are the Eastern standings in the CSL. Toronto alone in first place, followed by Hamilton. Ottawa and North York at six points apiece, and Montreal really desperate for a win if they hope to stay in contention for a playoff spot early in this 89 CSL season. Hello again, everybody. I'm Vic Roder. Welcome back to Montreal. And we're pleased to say we are back in Montreal for CSL Sunday because throughout the winter, the rumor was that the Supra may not survive. They found their first season an expensive year, but through the dedication of the front office staff and some of their sponsors and especially the players the Supra are alive and kicking in 89 the players you see are playing without any kind of guaranteed contracts if there is any money in the till at the end of the year then the players will split that profit but right now they're playing for absolutely no money the North York Rockets have gone through some changes as well Mirko Bazic is a Yugoslavian he's the new head coach and that means changes on the field as we hear from Graham Leggett with me is Jens Kramer, captain of the North York Rockets, and even he may need a program to find out who's playing on his side. There's been so many comments and going, Jens. Has it affected the team at all? Well, I think it's kept us really fresh. You know, when you get new blood into the team all the time, new players, it keeps you positive and makes you work for your spot all the time. And they're good players, you know, no doubt about that. Uh, on the other side, it always takes a little bit of time to get used to each other and to get used to how people play, and, and that takes time. But I think so far we've gelled nicely, and uh, we're coming, and this is uh, an important game for us tonight. Well, give us a couple of the new players to look out for, players that have impressed you so far. Um, the one, the Yugoslavian player, is 22 years old, Vladin Tomic. He plays up front, and he, he's very skillful with the ball. He likes to take players on, and uh, I've had people say to me at our home games, you know, he's an exciting player to watch. Um, the other guy up front, he's playing tonight, uh, Pavkovic. He's is his first start for us tonight. He's been with us, I think, for two weeks. He's our third import. Uh, he's an experienced player. He's played in FC Kaiserslautern in Germany for a bit, and he's played in Yugoslavia. So, but it's the first time he'll be playing tonight. So we'll have to see how he performs. Well, it's a great night for a game. Have a good one, James. Okay. Thanks for joining Thanks us. Thanks very much. Back to you, Vic. Graham, thank you very much. The last time these two teams met was at Esther Shiner Stadium earlier this season, and the North York Rockets won it by a score of 3-2. to two. The winning goal from Hector Marinero, but he's no longer with this team. As we've said, there are lots of changes with the Rockets. They're warming up when we come back. The North York Rockets, the Montreal Supra. Saint-Jean-Baptiste weekend in Montreal. CSL Sunday is a Foster's telecast. sur l'équipe canadienne qui représentera le pays aux Jeux de la francophonie au Maroc du 8 au 22 juillet. Patrick has just been chosen for the Canadian national team which will represent Canada at the first francophone games in Morocco between July 8 and 22nd. Yeah, we're doing the uh, balloon, uh, then we're doing Patrick the Yacht, uh, Patrick the Yacht, then we're doing North York, goalkeeper, lineup, goalkeeper. Okay. The Carling O'Keefe Balloon the, is overhead of Claude Robillard Stadium. Welcome back to Montreal as we're ready for the game between the North York Rockets and the Montreal Super CSL Sunday on TSN. And the Player of the Year for 1988, Patrick Driot, 
strength of the Supra. Seven goals in 28 games and receiving his trophy from Norman Bazinet, the director of sales of La Brasserie O'Keefe, who makes the presentation along with Supra GM Perry Arshaguni. And Graham, let's take a look at the starting 11 of the North York Rockets. Well, coach Mirko Bazic is going with a 4-4-2. Newcomer Don Ferguson in goal. Saren Topolis, Jansen, Kramer and Quarteron along the back four. Lonkarevich, Comiso, Tomic and Coil in midfield and up front Pavkovic and the exciting Eddie Berdusko. Seeing his first action, the keeper for the Rockets, Don Ferguson, picked up in a trade earlier this week for Hector Maldonado in his third season. First two years with Ottawa, then sat on the bench with the Rockets and has had 17 shutouts in two years. The starting 11 now for the Montreal Supra. Well, Andy Honorato is going with a 4-4-2 as well, although it's a little different. Braccio is in goal, Rizzi, Diot, Albanis and Boucher in the back four. Gagnon, Fraser, DeSantis and Kutsukis will play between the mid four and the front two of Needham and Tommy Kane. Andy Honorato really has two first-line goalkeepers in uh, Daniel Courtois and Aldo Braccio, and he's decided to go with the 25-year-old Braccio in his second season. Last year, 12 games, he had three shutouts, but really either he or Daniel Courtois could start in net for the Supra. The referee for tonight's game is Mr. Adriano Brunetta. The linesmen are Victor Montesino and Stanley Chad. A must-win situation really early in this game for the Montreal Super early in this season as they trail the North York Rockets and the Ottawa Intrepid by four points and a loss to North York would leave them six back and that's almost too much. But I think that the situation in the league is a little false because they had to play the first three games away from home and there's not too many teams in this league who win away from home. Home field advantage counts for a lot in the CSL. The North York Rockets in their blue shirts and white shorts with blue stockings. The Supra in their white, all white with blue numbers and the very flashy Tommy Kane tries to make the move through and can't. Andre Gagno plays it to the far side for Diot, looking in for Ian Fraser. Doesn't get there, Kane. For Nick DeSantis, lays it off for Kane in the box, and he just can't control. And the Supra pressing early. Well, they have to. They're playing at home. They have to get the first goal. I'm sure that Coach Andy Onorato said, look, if we get the first goal, then we can dictate the game. If we give up the first goal, North York can dictate the game. Tommy Kane in his second season, the 26-year-old, plays with the Kansas City Comets of the MISL. He's an All-American out of an American university. Plays very well in the midfield, but playing up front now for Andy Onorato. Well, we saw him play as a fullback last year, and he loved to come forward, but I'm dying to see him play up front. He's a strong player, and speaking about strong players and sharp players, Eddie Berdusco, center forward for the Rockets. Had an outstanding season when he came into the side last year. 12 goals a year ago, a rookie record, has two this year, but everyone's saying it's a little tougher for him because they're marking him. They know about him his second year. <laughs> yeah, sophomore year is a little different. Coyle plays it in, yes! Oh. And quickly goal. converted by Zelko Pavkovic, and the Yugoslav import connects and North York on their first pass. Well, just watch this to the far post. No danger at all. Zelko Pavkovic rises above everybody, knocks it over Aldo Braccio, and it's 1-0. It's a beautiful corner to the far post. Watch the big striker get up. Poor marking. No danger. Pick that out. 1-0 North York. Zelko Pavkovic. The North York Rockets had him try out when they went on a... European Italian tour as part of their preseason and he was injured and this is his first game the Yugoslav striker the 28 year old played last year with Zagreb Dinamo the Yugoslav di first division and he scores at two minutes of this first half to give North York the quick one nothing lead what and a great debut there goes the first goal that Andy Onorato wanted to get and it's gone to North York and once again they press Sarantopoulos making the run and this time, Braccio is out to pull it down. Peter Sarantopoulos, you know, a year ago we talked about people like John Fitzgerald, Tony Pignatello, and Peter Sarantopoulos. Well, this young man 
is the only one remaining off what was a very good young side. The rest are now with Toronto. And unfortunately, Tony Pignatello is out for the whole season with a very, very bad knee injury. But it's nice to see that Peter Sarantopoulos playing it right back. I love to see him at right back because he's so good at overlapping. We just saw him get on the right wing there, get behind the fullback. He's very, very clever. Centre back is restricted a little bit. Patrick Diot with the foul as he comes over the Scotsman. John Coyle played forward now by Fraser again. Oh, and getting his foot in there was Diot as Camiso lined it up. Into touch on the far side. They're doing some rebuilding around Claude Robillard. The new head coach, Mirko Bazic, comes to the North York Rockets after spending several years in the National Soccer League, especially with the Windsor Wheels. Well, back is the man that you talked to, Jens Kramer, who pushed the ball carrier away, and neatly, he's a big man, as you found out. <laughs> Very big man. I had to stand in an orange box to interview him. But Nick when Alban you're on the field, they're all the same size. Nick Albanis takes control, and it goes into touch. one nothing. Zelko Pavkovic with the goal for the North York Rockets at two minutes. They're putting in a new track around Claude Robillard, and then you see some of the bags of materials. And in fact, the referee, Mr. Brunetti, when he first arrived before the game, had some of the workers move things back because he felt the field was unsafe. And quite rightly so, because the safety of the players is his responsibility. It's all right for the groundsman to say it. Here's Pavkovic. Brancio gets a hand on it, but look at that big striker from Yugoslavia get through again. Pavkovic for North York. He is a big striker and deceptively quick. Strong run, he strides on, but watch Aldo Braccio come out, cut out the angle, uh, makes a bit of a meal of it, but manages to make it still 1-0 North York. Berdusko now at the top of the box. Being watched by Boucher, Berdusko! Oh, and off the post, Berdusko. Eddie Berdusko had 12 a year ago looking for number three this season. Well, Eddie thought he'd had one there for sure. Good skill sets him up clear. He pushes it wide of Aldo Braccio. Young keeper's got no chance, but uh, it can be a game of inches at times, and it just rattles off the post. But great skills by young Eddie Berdusco to control that ball and turn and then set himself clear. And Aldo Braccio has found himself under some heavy pressure early in this game. Braccio booms it up the field as the crowd now at Claude Robillard trying to get the Supra to pick up their game just a little bit. Berdusco across midfield. Diot, Cosimo Camiso, Rizzi for Andre Gagnon. Played forward now, Ross Cotteron. The left fullback in. Pakovic is there again. And this time, Pavkovic brings down Patrick Diot, and he is still on the ground. Well, this is a good cross, and just watch as Pavkovic swings for the ball. Unfortunately, he swings through a pair of white socks, and you're not allowed to do that. Number 12, Patrick Diot, is all set to clear. Bad tackle by Pavkovic, and the referee gives a free kick to the Montreal Supra. And Montreal Supra, who have had lots of injuries this season, do not want to lose Patrick Diot, their MVP for 1988. But it looks as if the he's okay. The Supra trainer, Dave Paddy, is out to have a look at Patrick Diot, the head coach, Andy Onorato, in his second season. Last year, they weren't really that far from making the playoffs. They made a good run towards the end of the season, but they had fallen behind early, and it was just too much to make up. And this year, of course, there was some doubt that the team, as we mentioned, would be back, but everyone dedicated, including Andy, who is not being paid for being a head coach, and if there's money left over, and we're dead, deadly serious about that. Some people chuckle, but we're deadly serious. If there's money left over, then everybody gets paid. Well, it's not a situation you want to see, but you have to admire the players for doing that. Uh, they're not going to go into this game 
with anything less than 100% and um, I hope, I really hope that they've got quite a bit in the kitty to share amongst themselves at the end of the season because I like to see that spirit, to uh, carry the club virtually saying okay we'll play on and if you break even or make anything give us something at the end of the season. I take my hat off to these Montreal Super players. I just hope that there are not any more teams in the league have to do that. Andre Gagnon Plicky plays it forward, has Kane, Ritzy has moved up now trying to win the ball but taken away nicely by Ross Coderon. John Coyle trying to make the run has it stripped away, this is Grant Needham with a chance, Needham across in front of the box and now it's Serentopoulos back to defend. Nick DeSantis in for Grant Needham and just over his head. But DeSantis has it opened up at the back and that young man, we talked about him, two goals so far, Very nearly got sharp. his third. Cuts it right across, it's deflected past Don Ferguson, but unfortunately for the Montreal Super, Tommy Kane was not up in time to slip it home. Good move by Grant Needham, very sharp. Only played one game this season, but already leads the club with two goals. Braccio for Nick Albanis. Looking for Tommy Kane. Sarantopoulos is there to head it down and take control. Cleared by Steve Jansen. And then too far for Berdusko. Eddie Berdusko and Zelko Pavkovic, the starting forwards for the North York Rockets with Coyle, Tomic, Komiso and Lakaravic in the midfield for the Rockets. And the definite Yugoslav connection with Tomic, Lakarovic and Pavkovic, the goal scorer on this rocket side. Isn't it funny? We had Slato as the coach and we had three Polish players. Now we have Mirko Bazic as the coach and we got three different players. But coaches do that. They, they, they go with players they know and they have confidence in. And uh, I did the same thing. When I was coaching the Toronto Metros, I went back to the youth clubs in England and brought over five youngsters who were playing in youth soccer from the English First Division. And I tell you, they set the North American Soccer League on the rears the way they buzzed around. Well, everyone agrees, or the North York Rockets certainly suggest that their team is much improved with the addition of these Yugoslav players. They're a very much faster side, and they realize that the Vancouver 86ers are the side to emulate and if you're going to be successful you have to be fast and they hope they now have a running side John Coyle works into the middle what a nice play but offside as Sarantopoulos broke a little too quickly on this near side well I think that Steve Jensen in the middle of the field had made a break he was offside because Peter Sarantopoulos timed his run perfectly and the ball was taken from center field and Nice to see that the back four of Steve Jensen and Jens Kramer are not afraid to come forward. When they see an opportunity, they go forward. It's nice to see. We've played just over 11 minutes of this first half and the North York Rockets lead 1-0 on the goal by Zelko Pavkovic at the two-minute mark. Played forward by Camiso. Quattarone makes the run, but too far, and Braccio is there to gather it in for the Supra. Braccio upfield, looking for Kane, need him in behind him. Pulled down neatly by Ian Fraser, who joins the team for his first game after playing the MISL year with Kansas City. Three members of this Supra side, member of the MISL Comets, Tasso Kutsukas, Tommy Kane, and Ian Frazier. Don Ferguson in his first game and ironically we understand that Paul Dolan, the number one keeper in Hamilton, may be more seriously hurt than was first thought after he was hurt in a game on Wednesday against Ottawa and that was one of the reasons they could afford to let Don Ferguson go is because they had Paul Dolan and uh, maybe they regret that now. Mind you, their new keeper played very well in a 2-1 win against Winnipeg on Friday night. But certainly you couldn't see 
Don Ferguson sitting on the bench in Hamilton. No, and uh, it's surprising that he started tonight because Mauro Pipo has played every minute of all five games for North York and has done really well. So Don Ferguson getting the start tonight. Mauro Pipo pl playing every minute of all five games, as has Saren Topolis, Quateron, Jensen, Marinaro, who's now gone to Hamilton in that trade, and Tomic. So surprising, really, to see that Mauro Pipo doesn't start, although I do feel that Don Ferguson has got just a little bit more experience than Mauro, although Mauro's done really well. Ian Fraser gives it up in midfield. Quateron for Jens Kramer and back to Don Ferguson. 87 and 88 he spent with Ottawa and then in the trade for Paul James. He goes to Hamilton as Tommy Kane tries to bust his way through but can't get by Steve Jansen. I used to kid Tommy Kane because he was a U.S. player and playing up here in Canada, but he really gives 100% and he was very effective at fullback. I'm looking forward to see how he's doing at centre forward because it's a totally different game. At fullback, you're facing most of the play. Centre forward, you're turning all the time. Eddie Berdusco trying to get through and can't. Played back neatly by Nick Albanis to Aldo Braccio. Albanis slowly up the field, works it into the middle. Pass to Santos. Patrick Diot. Albanis for Kane as they work it around. Jean Pierre Boucher for Rizzi on the far side and into touch. Nick Albanis in his second season, a solid defender, the 27-year-old, played 18 games last year, had no goals, but he can you can count on him. He's one of those players that stays back there and defends well. <laughs> he, he really does defend well. He's very experienced, very reliable. And I was kidding him before the game. I said, I can't believe you're only 27, Nick. You've been around for 50 years. Ian Fraser gets by again, y'all. This is Ritzi. Needham, Kane, DeSantis all up front if he can get the ball there. He goes back for Gagnon, then Quateron intercepts. Berdusco. A little give and go with Camiso. And then Quateron can't control on the far sideline. A reminder to stay with us after the game for the TSN Turning Point. Brought to you by Converse. <laughs> All-Stars, all you need. Welcome back to Claude Robillard in Montreal. CSL Sunday on TSN. The Super and the North York Rockets with North York leading 1-0 on a very quick goal by Zelko Pavkovic at the two-minute mark. That converse must be good shoes if a pipe was wearing it. I couldn't <laughs> believe that in the effort. Now, do you want to talk about the... Scotch under-16 team losing to Saudi Arabia. Oh, what a surprise. I mean, Scotland did so well to get to the final of the under sixteen, but it just shows you Saudi Arabia have invested billions of dollars in the soccer program, and it's beginning to pay off, but 51,000 at Hamden yesterday to see the young Scots lose. They what lost a great on tournament. penalty kicks, yeah, 5-4. And in fact, you're right, because if I'm not mistaken, I read that the head coach of this under-16 was a Dane, a Danish uh, head coach. As Gagnon gets through, Gagnon, oh, and just cleared away at the last minute, neatly by Stefan Lakanovic, who came back to defend. But Gagnon was through. And Stefan Lakanovic shouldn't really have been there. It should really have been an equalizer for Montreal Super. And Bill Kovacic says, how could we leave Stefan Lokarovic as the back man when they attack? Tasso Kosukos on the far side for the Supra into the middle, flicked in by Bridge. DeSantis is there. Bridge goes up again and misses. Camiso for Coyle and Gagnon bumps him off the ball. Oh, he fucking ran! 
Well, this should well have been the equaliser for the Montreal Supra. Watch this turn by Andre Gagnon, but he can't hook it. The ball breaks to the white shirt, but Stefan Lonkarovic, the midfield player. Good hustle, Stefan. Ian Fraser on the far side looking for Needham, but Jens Kramer, the North York Rockets captain, is there. This is Kutsukos. Heels it back neatly. Ritzi trying to get through. Lakarovic wins the battle of the heads with DeSantis. Perdusco tries to run it down, and Jean Pierre Boucher will play it back to Braccio. Albanis. No one running into space. Coyle will come to the near side. Zarentopoulos has a look. John Coyle. Looking for Lankarovic who's breaking. But right there watching him was Nick DeSantis and Braccio got there as well. The Montreal Supra, who started the season with three straight games on the road and then three straight losses, came back with a 3-0 win in their home opener a week ago over the Winnipeg Fury. There you see the time remaining in this first half here at Claude Robillard with the North York Rockets leading 1-0. Albanis. Diot chips it into the middle, has Tommy Kane. Jansen marking him. Needham moves to the middle of the box. DeSantis has moved up, so is Fraser. That's Ritzi. And into touch, and it'll be throw in for the Supra. Crossed into the middle and cleared away by Jens Kramer. Albanis now moves up. DeSantis can't get by Serentopoulos and DeSantis is still down on that half ball and holding his left knee. Kutsukos for Kane. Gagnon through Serentopoulos. Kutsukos and out comes Ferguson. It's still loose. Serentopoulos will finally clear it. And Nick DeSantis is still down on the ground for the Montreal Supra. And clutching his left knee and the referee, Mr. Brunetti, saying, play on. Played into the middle, Tomic, can he turn on it? Tomic trying to bust through and he tried to do it all himself with Berdusko and Pavkovic there as well. And there you see Nick DeSantis. Well, I don't think that Nick DeSantis is faking it at all. It was a brilliant tackle by Peter Sarantopoulos. Nick DeSantis is reaching for it. Sarantopoulos goes in strongly. Now he twists his knee. There you can see him grasping his left knee. But that was a clean tackle by Peter Sarantopoulos. The unfortunate thing for Nick DeSantis was that he was reaching for the ball. And perhaps Mr. Adriano Brunetti could have stopped the player there because it was obvious that Nick DeSantis was not faking it. We have a halftime score from Toronto Centennial Stadium and look at this the Toronto Blizzard leading 2-0 over the Ottawa Intrepid and both first half goals coming from David Byrne who has returned from the MISL and they were looking for big things from David. And David certainly not letting them down he scored in midweek and his first game back from Missile, and I tell you what, David Byrne in this league is an outstanding player, very experienced. So it looks as if Nick DeSantis has hurt his knee very seriously, and unfortunately for the Montreal Supra, this is the last thing they need. They've got enough injury problems as it is, and now Nick DeSantis is having to leave the field. And coming into the game as a substitution, Gaspar Alexis, 
in his second season with the Super. The 27-year-old will replace Nick DeSantis. Coyle will take the corner and this time Braccio gets out and just over his shoulder and looking over his back again was Pavkovic who scored the goal for North York in two minutes. Tommy Kane now trying to outrun Sarantopoulos. Will he get there first? Sarantopoulos is there and they battle and a little push. And there you see the Supra training staff headed by Dave Carey looking at that left knee of Nick DeSantis. And the ironic thing is that Nick DeSantis only came into the team 20 minutes before the kickoff because Christian Gurkov, the young striker, was injured. And uh, Andy Onorato certainly got plenty of injury problems here with the Montreal Supra. Marco Rizzi had two goals in 25 games last year. The 20-year-old defender. Andy Anarato was telling me this morning, Graham, that early in the season on the road, he had so many injuries, he was carrying sometimes 10 and a, uh, 11 players, and that's all. I mean, he was barely fielding a team. Ironically, though, we mentioned that four of the North York Rockets have played every minute of this season. The seven players have played every minute of this season so far for Montreal. Kutsukas, Diotti, Ritzi, Gurkov, DeSantis, and Albanis, and Boucher. So he's not too bad. There's, there's been lots of injuries in the Canadian Soccer League this season. Very, very surprising because last year there were hardly any at all. It yeah. seems that people are just getting stuck in a little bit more. Two goals a year ago for the captain, Jens Kramer, the 25-year-old defender for the Rockets who will get himself at the top of the box watching Tommy Kane, the two big boys facing each other. 1-0, North York leading the Supra. We've played 25 minutes of this first half at Claude Robillard. Ritzy is in the middle. They go for Ian Frazier at the top of the box, and he has a crack, but it bounces off a defender, and it's cleared now by the Rockets. Verdusco right at the midfield stripe. Look at this nice ball through for Lankarovic. Lankarovic with showing some of that speed that the Rockets thought he had, but he was suddenly surrounded by white shirts. Well, he may have shown some speed to get forward, and it was a lovely run, but his control left a lot to be desired, and I'm sure he's talking to himself right now because that was a lovely ball from Eddie Berdusco to set him clean through. Couldn't control the ball, and the chance was lost. Genio gives it away. Pavkovic, the goal scorer. Tomic has made a run, and that's where the ball goes. Tomic for John Coy. Lankarovic is forward. Ganyal comes over, and the ball will go over the end line, and it'll be goal kick for Aldo Braccio. It's 1-0 North York leading CSL Sunday is a Foster's telecast. Come on, guys, let's go! The North York Rockets have just converted on a very nice play, and it's on the other part of the Yugoslav connection. Vladin Tomic, and it was set up by Cosimo Comiso off the left side. And a quick break by the North York Rockets. Not enough white shirts back. Vladin Tomic controls the ball, walks past Aldo Braccio, knocks it into the corner. It's 2 0 North York after 27 minutes. There's the ball. He's all alone. He doesn't panic. Sign of experience. Pick that out. 2 0. 
And Braccio committed himself, and while there were defenders on the line, they just you needed a wall of white shirts to stop that. Well, in all fairness to Aldo Braccio, he had no option. He had to go out and challenge Vlad and Tomic, but the white shirts of Montreal very slow to get back as the North York Rockets broke quickly and full marks to Cosimo Comiso for breaking on the left, pushing that ball straight across to Vlad and Tomic. The veteran made no mistake. The goal by Tomic at 27 minutes and North York lead 2-0 over the Montreal Supra. Marco Rizzi tries to get through himself and can't and I think that's the danger now. You're behind by two and players may try to do things by themselves. Well, I think it's a little too early for that, and I don't think it's time for heroics. I think right now, and for the last 10 minutes, that the North York Rockets have been quicker on the ball, they've been sharper on the ball, and uh, they're making space better. And I, I just think that right now, North York Rockets are outplaying the Montreal Supra. The 22-year-old midfielder from Red Star Belgrade. In his first season, that's his third goal for Vladen Tomic. And maybe Mirko Bazic knew something when you say about coaches having their favorites and going to the players they know well. He certainly has known well with these two. Well, I wouldn't mind having a pair of Yugoslavs on my team. I admire the way the Yugoslavs played. Scotland played in the World Cup in a game I played in against Yugoslavia in 1958, our very first game in the Swedish World Cup. And I tell you, Yugoslavians have always had brilliant players. Tasso Kutsukus of the Super is brought down by John Coyle. The fans here, Claude Roby, are looking for a foul, but it didn't come from Mr. Brunetti. Gagnon for Needham. As Needham has now fallen back to the midfield, and Kutsukus and Kane are now the front runners, and Kutsukus. They're starting to overlap a little bit, Graham, as the Super now start to press some of their midfield forward. Here's Needham at the top of the box, Gagnon, but nobody running. Gagnon broke right, the ball went left, and there was nobody there. Well, the plain truth of the matter right now is that uh, midfielders of North York are getting back to defend much more quickly than the white shirt midfielders of the Montreal Super are getting up to support. And if you're playing a 4-4-2 as the Montreal Super and the North York Rockets are playing, your midfield players have to do a lot of work. Camiso gets across in front and the ball will go by this near post and over the end line. And it's been a busy evening so far in first half for Aldo Braccio. He's given up a pair as North York lead 2-0. Well, you couldn't blame the goalkeeper for the second goal. That was a one-on-one -on -one and an experienced player like Vlad and Tomic is going to walk around him and slot it home. But perhaps you could have blamed Aldo Braccio for the first goal when... The big striker, Pavkovic, had a free header at the far post. That shouldn't happen inside the six-yard box. Kramer booms it upfield. Has Tomic. Quateron to Tomic. And he's muscled off the ball, and Braccio will take control for the Supra. We've played 32 minutes of this first half and I suspect there'll be some injury time added on by Mr. Brunetti for the players DeSantis going down as well as Diot. It's been a busy week for Mr. Brunetti. He was telling us he was down in the States in in Connecticut for the World Cup qualifying game between the U.S. and Guatemala. And quite a win for the U.S. 2-1 to one, and it looks very much as if the United States will be playing in Italy in the World Cup. They just need about another couple of wins and the U.S. are through. Kramer slips but the ball played back neatly to Don Ferguson. Andy Anderato. This is only their fifth game of the season, but very important as they trail both Ottawa and North York. 
by four points. So the Super really need this one. Kutsukos, oh my. Ferguson throws up his hand saying, what happened, fellas? And Kutsukos didn't miss by much. Oh, Kutsukos sort of sliced it a little bit and it bent. But what's Don Ferguson? Takes a little bit of a curve. He had it covered. There was no way that was going in the goal. He made it look a little more difficult than it was Don Ferguson, but it's his first game for North York, and so far he's got a shutout. Tasso Kutsukis, good effort from there, just sliced it a little bit too much. You know, we saw coach Andy Onorato a minute ago on the Montreal bench. You'd expect Andy to be bilingual speaking French here in Montreal, but I saw him this morning on TV on an Italian program, and Andy, your Italian is molto bene. <laughs> bravo, bravo, Andy. The Lexus battles and wins the ball. Now it's pushed over the end line. And oh, Mr. Brunetti. <laughs> oh, and the crowd the Lexus like thought that. he had won a corner kick, but Mr. Brunetti says no, it's goal kick. And the uh, 2,000 odd fans here at the Claude Robillard agreed with Gaspar the Lexus. They thought it was a corner kick, but referee Andriano Brunetti full marks to him right on the spot. He wasn't calling that decision from way across the field. He was right up with the play. Pavkovic is there and heads it through, but Berdusko couldn't control. And Pavkovic could be one of our candidates for our foster player of the game, as well as the converse turning point. Remember, at the end of the game, we'll be picking our Foster's player of the game. Hope you'll join in with us at home and see if you agree with me for a change, folks. Gagnon tries to <laughs> get it to Dalexis making the run on the left side, but Tomic played it neatly and got the foot in the way. This is Berdusko. For John Coyle. And then Berdusko as he gets up. Has a little go with Jean-Pierre Boucher, and Boucher is slow to get up as he and Berdusco tangle. Well, it looked very much to me when Jean-Pierre Boucher went in for that ball, he got an elbow on the ribs, and uh, I would say that Eddie Berdusco should have come off the worst for it, but it's Jean-Pierre Boucher who's on the ground. Jean-Pierre Boucher went in very hard against Eddie Berdusco just as the North York Rocket centre forward was laying the ball off. And it looks as if the Montreal Super defender got the worst of the tackle and Andy Onorato does not want any more injuries. This is the last thing he needs. He only has w two more players on the bench. That's not counting the goalkeeper. Jean-Pierre Boucher in his first season from Sherbrooke of the Quebec Provincial League and you can see how thin the bench is for Andy Anarato. Hey Patrick, on laisse tout tout tourner au milieu. Il soit le ballon, il tourne avec le ballon. I'm not sure what Andy Anarato is saying now because he's speaking in the time. Well, Jean-Pierre Boucher went in very strongly for the tackle. Just watch this. Just as Eddie Bordusco is laying it off. Over the back of him, and now as he gets up. Well, tough to tell from here. That's our camera shot from way on top of the, the roof of the stand here at the Claude Robillard Stadium. And it really was a strong tackle by Jean-Pierre Boucher. Eddie Bordusco laid the ball off. They both went together, but... Jean-Pierre Boucher seems to be okay, and I can hear right up at our broadcast location a sigh of relief from Andy Onorato. He does not want any more injuries. And so far, Jean-Pierre Boucher has played very well at left fullback for him. Tomic, Gagnon, this is Delexis. Tomic marking him, and it'll go into touch. It'll be throw-in for the Supra, and they trail 2-0. Pavkovic at 2 minutes, Tomic at 27 minutes. Dalexis into the top of the box, cleared neatly by Kramer, Gagnon, Albanis. Pavkovic very quick to break on him. Quateroni. 
Diot. The little dummy doesn't work as it gets by and Tomic clears. To the other side for Perdusco. And getting back neatly was Diot Gagnon. Little push by Cosimo Camiso and the free kick to the Supra. Frazier, this is Grant Needham. Kutsukos. Trying to put it through, but they can't because there's just a little bit of a wall of blue shirts there and it's cleared away by Tomic. Diot gets away from Tomic. This is Needham. Can he find somebody in the middle? He goes to the other side and Quateroni gets there first as he was looking for Tommy Kane. Wasn't a bad ball by Grant Needham. You know, we look at Grant Needham, we tend to forget that he's only 18 years old. It's his second season playing for the Montreal Super, but he's still a very young player. And right now he's showing a lot of maturity. Good boy. He tried to switch the play and catch the North York Rockers defense off the guard, but I must say that Ross Porter on at fullback read it well. Nick Albanis went in hard on John Coyle and the Scotsman in his second season slow to get up. Well, John Coyle won't like this tackle. Nick Albanis a little late in the tackle. John Coyle saw it coming in, tried to hurdle Nick, but didn't quite manage. Rather surprised, I spoke to John Coyle, who's a midfielder, 24, Scottish obviously. Spoke to him before the game and rather surprisingly he did not play last season in Scotland. He, he had some contract problems and came back June 1st to play for the North York Rockets and I'm sure that Mirko Bazic is glad to have him back. Well he had five goals a year ago and he has two so far this season, John Coyle. Steady in the midfield. That's what we saw last year, and I suspect that's the kind of thing that they're looking for him this year as well. 2-0, the Rockets leading, as we are now late in this first half at Claude Robillard. Chip forward. Still in the box. Yes! Now oh, the linesman's flag was up. Oh, a break, and now the argument with Bird. Uh, there was no Brunetti. danger at all. Pavkovic had moved forward. Mirko Basic does not like it, but Zelko Pavkovic on the original free kick and moved forward, and the flag was up when the ball was taken. There it is. There's no doubt about it. He's way offside. And John Coyle was the man that puts the ball away, but it won't count as it's offside. And Victor Montesino, the linesman on this near side, full marks, put his flag up right away and kept it up. That's all that remains, 2-0. Ian Frazier wins the ball at midfield. Trying to play it through, Needham, and this time it's the flag on the other side from Stanley Chan, as Needham broke too quickly. And one thing about these two linesmen, they put the flags up right away and they kept them up. Good decisions. There's the ball played through, he was level with Steve Jensen, offside, no doubt about it. Well done, Stanley Chan. Although it's tough to convince the Montreal super fans that he made the right decision. Ian Frazier looking for Kane. Steve Jensen is there to defend. Kane battles. And I must say There's that Grant the Needham and officials. Tommy Kane are having a tough time as we look at Stanley Chan because if Steve Jensen goes for the ball, Jens Kramer is covering. If Jens Kramer goes for the ball, then Steve Jensen is covering. And they're playing very, very effectively as the dual centre-backs. Well, Kramer certainly played uh, is the anchor of that Rockets defence, played 28 games a year ago. The Super decide to start all over again. It is Braccio for Albanis. 2-0. The Rockets from North York lead the Supra of Montreal. 
And you know, there are some obvious things in this game, but perhaps the most obvious is that the Montreal Supra have to score the next goal. If they give up a 3-0 lead to this North York Rockets side, it's game over. So as far as Andy Onorato is concerned, the next goal has to belong to Montreal Supra. He got the first goal, Zelko Pavkovic at two minutes to give the Rockets a quick lead and then it was Vladin Tomic at 27 minutes. Lakarovic can't get by to Alexis. Sarantopoulos. Sarantopoulos directing a little traffic as the offside line sets up at the top of the box, chips it into the middle. Headed down by Tomic. Alexis will try to control off his chest. Alexis plays it forward and Sarantopoulos will drive it into touch. And Sarantopoulos will get the throw in. I really like Peter Sarantopoulos. He can play right back. He can play a center back. He's a cool player. He loves to put a little bit of work on the ball. Not afraid to go forward. I think he's perhaps one of Canada's most promising young defenders. Jean-Pierre Boucher guilty of pushing and so it'll be another free kick for the Rockets and there is Peter Sarantopoulos the 21 year old member of the national program clears it into the box headed down neatly and cleared away Quateron loses it to Kane this is Kutsukos his Kansas City teammate for Grant Needham on the far side Kramer but clear for the Rockets Diot Andre Gagnon slips it by and then is surrounded and gives it up coil now for the North York Rockets. Quateron for Berdusco and the flag goes up as Berdusco was in behind Jean-Pierre Boucher. And once again Victor Montesino, the linesman on the near side, picks out Eddie Berdusco for just moving a little too quickly. Eddie Berdusco very quick, very quick over the first five yards. And in soccer, that's the distance you have to be sharp in. No good running quickly for 30, 40 yards. You've got to be quick off the mark. It's like, a, the ball quickly. it's like a sprinter. You have to be quick out of the blocks. Exactly. But not on steroids. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's forget the steroids. Tommy Kane. One goal so far this year. Hope that last year might win him a spot on the U.S. World Cup side. But... Obviously didn't impress the U.S. coaches, and he's watching like so many other people. But uh, he never can tell. There may be changes before the World Cup in Italy if the side makes it that far. I tell you, if the United States get to Italy, I think a player like Tommy Kane can do a very, very good job for them. But then the U.S. coaches know their players, and uh, Tommy Kane, I'm sure, would give them a... 100%. You could play Tommy Kane anywhere and you'll get a good performance from him, although I don't think that centre forward is perhaps his best position. John Coyle. Lankarovic is making a run on the right. Coyle will tee it up himself and just miss by this near post. And when you give John Coyle a chance to tee it up and he can see the whites of Aldo Braccio's eyes in the Montreal Supra goal, there's no way that John's not going to hit it. No matter how many North York Rockets were running off the ball, that if the Montreal Super defenders back off him, he's going to try it from there, and he just hooked it a little wide. Lankarovic, Pankovic, this is Tomic, the Yugoslav trio connecting right now. Tomic, Lankarovic gets by to Alexis. Lankarovic crosses it, and Braccio is there to pick up a skipping ball. We're into injury time, some two minutes in this first half. And with the number of players down, you expected some time to be added on by Mr. Brunetti. 
Well, I'm sure that Adriano Brunetti knows exactly what he's doing. Normally, you don't add it on the first half too often. It's usually at the end of the game they add it on, and if, if the home side is winning at that time, you get the whistles from the crowd. But the legal thing is to add it on on both halves. Needham plays it forward for Kane. Jansen there to mark him on the far side into touch, and it'll be throw-in for the Supra. Maybe one last chance at a goal here. They trail by two late injury time of this first half. Gagnon across the top of the box and then Kramer with his big long legs to clear it. Berdusko can't get it by uh, Nick Albanis. Tommy Kane gets away, plays it quickly on the foul. Need him. Marco Rizzi can't get away. And now Mr. Brunetti wants to have a little chat. Well, Ian Fraser just a little late with the tackle there as Ross Quarter on tried to clear it. Couldn't quite reach it, stretched his foot in, and uh, referee Adriano Brunetti blew down. Wasn't a vicious tackle. He's stretching for the ball. Just comes in a little late. No contact really made in the shin where it could have hurt. And I think that Ross Quarteron's pride's hurt more than his body. A throw in for the Rockets and Quarteron will take it on the far side. And there's the whistle from Mr. Brunetti. He tacked on some four and a half minutes of injury time and this first half is over and North York in control. And I think that North York really good value for your 2-0 to nil win, 2-0 to nil lead I should say. The Montreal Super had a couple of chances but Don Ferguson managed to keep them out. 2-0 a fair result at halftime. Well I'm sure the Super will have something to say about whether it's a win or not from the second half with the score North York 2, Montreal nothing. You're watching Foster CSL Sunday on TSN. And it'll go down as one of the, you know, hopefully one of the good things in sports to be done in this uh, decade, I guess. The criticism aimed at the 86ers has to do with the CSL. The critics point out that if the 86ers do indeed set a new record on Sunday, they will have set it in a league that lacks the credibility of, say, the NHL. Obviously, the, there is going to be that, that kind of speculation. I think, um, you know, you just have to look um, at every sport. Um, it doesn't matter what it is. Um, there's always uh, people talking about, well, um, you know, this is league's not as strong as it used to be, or these teams are not as good as it used to be, and yet uh, teams don't put a streak together like we have. The last time the 86ers lost a game was June 5th of last year. North York upset Vancouver 3-1. to but since then, they have been dominating, winning a league championship and setting nearly every scoring record in the Canadian Soccer League. Now, all good things must come to an end, and so the 86ers undefeated streak. But the question is, when? Well, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure someone's going to end it sooner or later. Um, it should be interesting to see what happens when it does, because um, you know, the team definitely has got used to winning. There is also an ironic twist to this record. The 79-80 Philadelphia Flyers were coached by Pat Quinn, who is now the general manager of the Vancouver Canucks. And word has it, Quinn plans to attend Sunday's game. They really are the class of the league, and you wonder if anybody can beat them. Certainly more and more teams, as North York is, trying to emulate their style of play. Well, they are trying to emulate the style of play, and it's a great style of play because they try to outscore their opponents. And I think the criticism that it's not the NFL, it's not the, the CFL, it's not the NHL, right. doesn't hold true because they're playing against the peers, and this is still a record that's going to take some beating, and they deserve it. Vancouver 86ers, they've done really well. And full credit to uh, Bobby Leonard Uzi, the head coach, and Buzzy Parsons, who has been the GM the last two years and left the team at the beginning of this season, for going with this style of play right from the beginning. They said, we're going to score some goals. We may give up some at the back, 
but we're going to outscore you. It may be 7-6, but we're going to win the games. Yeah, that's how they play, and I love to play that way. That, that's the only way to play. And and I say, I think that the, the good thing about the Vancouver 86ers is, is that they've not stacked the team with super super players. They are great players, yeah, but sure. they've brought youngsters in. They've got they've got great youngsters coming forward, and it shows that the, the state of soccer in this country is very, very healthy. Well, Dominic Mobilio is certainly one of the best, and he proved it last year with the 86ers, and this year he played it in the MISL and showed it there as well. What a celebration here before the game, but things now not so great. Could the sun be setting on Montreal? They have to come back. They trail 2-0. CSL Sunday is a Foster's telecast. Get your cold drinks, get your hot dogs, get your cold drinks. And if somebody's down there, you can get me a cold drink, please. It is warm here and humid in Montreal. North York leading the Supra 2-0. And I'll have a nice, tall, cool one before this <laughs> night is over. Welcome back, everybody. Vic Roder along with Graham Leggett. Montreal Supra down 2-0 in a game. And we don't want to overemphasize it and make it too dramatic. This is still only their fifth game of the season. But when you're four points behind, Behind Ottawa and North York, they must really win this game, and they had the first opportunity, but after that, really it was all North York. Well, North York Rockets goals come from Yugoslavia with love. It's a high corner kick. Zelko Pavkovic rises well. He's got a free header at the far post. Young goalkeeper Braccio is nowhere. Easy goal for North York. You can see the goalkeeper come, stop. Big Zelko Pavkovic knocks it in. It's 1-0 and only two minutes into the game. It could well have been two minutes later. Eddie Bordusco shows great skills to set himself up. Beats Aldo Braccio. But just watch this, folks. What a cruel game. It's a game of inches. It rattles off the post. And Eddie Bordusco fails to score. The second goal comes via Cosimo Camiso, crosses it well, it reached Vladan Tomic, he coolly rounds Braccio, picks his spot, 2-0 North York after 27 minutes. The Montreal defence is slow to get back, Cosimo cuts it across well, and the experience of Vladan Tomic shows here, he doesn't panic, doesn't try to blast it, coolly rounds the young keeper, rolls it just inside the post, 2 nil, and both goals coming from Yugoslavia with love. And the players, the white-shirted Supra, the blue-shirted North York Rockets.